Welcome to the Machine Learning Fundamentals Scikit-Learn Introduction. This is Section 2. What is Machine Learning? We'll cover why now, what is machine learning, the concepts of a machine learning pipeline, and the various types of machine learning. Great, let's get started. We now live in the age of big data. How big is big? The average global data amount is about 4.4 zettabytes. That's 4.4 times 10 to the 21. For comparison, the average data generated daily is about 2.5 quintillion bytes. Now, how big are these data bytes? For reference, the whole of entire the English Wikipedia downloaded is about 50 gigabytes. Now, if we were to print all this data out, this would be about 14 stacks of bookshelves, as you can see in an accurate illustrated diagram down here below. Now, given all this data and its ever-increasing amount year by year, coupled with the amount that CPU processing in floating point operations has still been increasing almost exponentially every two years, roughly following Moore's law, which is a doubling of transistors that could fit on a integrated processor every two years, and has still continued today with the latest recent advents with graphical processing units, or GPUs, as illustrated here. This really allows a lot of pattern recognition and machine learning models to process these humongous data sets, which we'll cover later. Now, the accurate definition of what machine learning is, is the scientific study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to perform a specific task without using explicit instructions, relying on patterns and inference instead. It's really a subset of artificial intelligence, where artificial intelligence is creating intelligent systems. Now, these allow us to rely on patterns inside data and infer them instead of explicitly programming tasks. These really excel at tasks that normally require a lot of context, such as driving a car. There is an incredible amount of context that needs to be required and learned and can be quite difficult to explicitly program, particularly in this example of recognizing objects inside an image, where they are, putting a bounding box around them called localization, and classifying what exactly is that object. Is it a car, traffic light, motorbike, a person, or predicting the future time series of a time series. Here we can see the COT forecasts in the future. The more canonical definition of machine learning today is defined by Tom N. Mitchell, which is a computer program that is said to learn from an experience E with respect to some class of tasks T and performance measure P. If its performance at tasks in T, as measured by the performance measure, improves with the experience E. So essentially, this means that the algorithm improves with more experience. Now, here's a nice illustrated approach of creating a algorithm that is to classify whether the image is a cat or a dog. We give it the experience of what a cat looks like and what a dog looks like. This forms the training data. This goes into the learning algorithm, and then we can actually have a task where we give it a new image of a previously unseen image, which is a dog, and then it will output the classification of what it believes the most probable class is. In this case, for example, it may say that it's 85% a dog. So therefore, we would classify it as a dog. Now, we can start looking at this with an illustrated example. By opening up Scikit-Learn, we can load the digits data set, which is an optical character recognition data set of handwritten digits. You can see the typical examples here. The handwritten digits cover the span of the digits from zero to nine. Here are nine examples. A particular example, looking at one, is a image of eight by eight pixels. And we often flatten this image into a vector. And we'll be using vectors in the further presentation. Here, we're flattening this image. We get a vector of 64 elements, or in this case, vector of 64 dimensions. Now the goal is to build a program that will take vector X and will produce the identity of the digit as the output. We could attempt to tackle it with programming various rules. However, these handcrafted rules would lead to poor generalizations and results. It's better to use a machine learning approach. We use a large set of n digits called a training set, and we can use these to infer the parameters of a parameterized mathematical model. The categories of this fits into the training set unknown in advance, typically labeled by human via inspection. We can express the category of a digit or the label of a digit using the labeled vector y. Here we can see the mathematical equation of a black box model fx. We can jump to a particular training set, in this case for supervised learning, we'll have examples and we'll also have corresponding labels for the examples, as you can see here, and we'll represent these in a vector of x. 
along with the corresponding labels, which we represent as Y here. We have one label per digit image X. The result of the mathematical machine learning algorithm can be expressed mathematical function FX, which takes a new input image X and generates a predicted label Y. Normally the label is encoded the same way as the output training labels. The precise mathematical form is really determined by the training phase and the training phase normally works out the ideal or optimal model hyperparameters. Once the model has been trained, can the use then be used to determine the identity of new images which it may never have seen before. These normally comprise of a test set. The ability to categorize new images that it's never been seen before is called generalization. In practical examples, training examples will only really capture a small set of all the possible input examples the model will see in the wild. And therefore, generalization really is a key and core goal of any machine learning framework or machine learning system. You can see here that we have a quick pipeline. So we have the mathematical function or model that we learn, and we give it to learn the parameters of this mathematical function fx, the training examples, of which the training x examples and the labeled outputs y. Now it's our job to find the ideal model for the application and train it in such a way that we get the best generalization and get the best test accuracy in time. Now there's, there's a quite core part of this as well is that the original input variables are typically pre-processed to transform them into some new space of variables where it's hoped that the pattern recognition problem will be easier to solve. For example, the original images seen here have actually been translated, scaled, and rotated such that each digit is normalized, meaning it's uniform across the various classified examples to contain within a single box of fixed size. This really reduces the variability within each digit class because the location and scale of all the digits is now the same, which makes it easier for a subsequent pattern recognition algorithm to distinguish between the different classes. This pre-processing stage is called feature extraction, and it really is a key to perform on the training data sets and also the test sets, and forms into the machine learning pipeline. Sometimes the number of features is reduced from the original sample, for example, a form of dimensionality reduction, and this really should be taken with care, as sometimes information is discarded, and once information is lost, this can also affect the test accuracy and lower it, and therefore the accuracy of the overall model may suffer as a result. So we can see here in an illustrated diagram how we can actually extract the feature set of various types of inputs. And we also want to test it with previously unseen images of digits. For example, one like this. How will it react? So really to categorize machine learning, it kind of falls into different sets. Now, what we just saw was supervised learning, where we are actually given a data set which has examples and corresponding labels for each example. Now these labels, if it's discrete set, this forms into classifying the class, the output class. For example, this might be, in our case, a dog or a cat. What is the output? If it is not that simple, and it actually forms into continuous variable or multiple continuous variables, this forms a regression problem. For example, what is the probability for a particular event happening at this certain time? Now, if we don't have labels, this forms into unsupervised learning, but we have lots of examples. So therefore we try to look for clusters inside the data and see if certain examples match up to certain other examples, or we might try and reduce the dimensional end of the data, or actually work out the distribution parameters that the data could be sampled from. So for instance, we might find say the average of the data might be this number. Getting into reinforcement learning, it's concerned with the problem of finding suitable actions to take in a given situation in order to maximize a given reward. The algorithm must discover optimal outputs by a process of trial and error. Often the focus is on finding a balance between exploration of uncharted territory and exploitation of its current knowledge. To summarize, we went over why now is the perfect time to do machine learning, what a typical machine learning pipeline looks like, and the various types of machine learning possible.